would first uh, like to call on the, our first reactor uh, from Sri Lanka, uh, Dr. Iranda Karuna Dasa. Uh, he's a consultant surgeon, a senior lecturer and head of the Department of Surgery, Wayamba uh, University of Sri Lanka. He's also an instructor for the National Trauma uh, Management Course. Uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Iranda, for your reaction uh, for the four lectures. Uh, I uh, actually feel uh, privileged, honored, and humbled to uh, comment on Prof. Uh, Paul Nye's presentation from uh, all the way from uh, Norway, uh, Department of Traumatology, uh, Oslo University Hospital. Uh, I uh, would like to start with uh, appreciating Prof.'s uh, comprehensive lecture, which covered the biggest tragedy uh, struck uh, on Norway after the Second World War. Uh, he explained the disastrous incidents from a medical point of view and the ground situation as uh, at the time of the uh, hospital response uh, in a systematic manner. Uh, during uh, his talk, uh, he emphasized uh, on many important take-home take messages, uh, one of which was uh, uh, significance of training. Uh, so, significance of triaging, as well as triaging to avoid unnecessary burden on the receiving end, especially to prevent the bottleneck phenomenon from happening, because this uh, unnecessary admissions will uh, will make a big havoc to the uh, handling center. And he further went on describing the challenges faced during the prioritizing the uh, allocation of available resources at the uh, receiving end. Uh, in addition, he highlighted the imperativeness of coordinated or split or dual surgical command, uh, which was highlighted during his uh, lecture. And uh, he also advised on uh, the significance of fashion uh, registration, data handling, as well as uh, uh, for the learning purposes, especially for the research purposes, which will be done uh, later on. Uh, in view of uh, uh, giving a feedback or to improve things in, in the future. So following that, he, uh, following that, he hinted uh, on how best to handle the media as well as the politicians, uh, as doctors which we are not used to. Uh, Sri Lanka, of course, unfortunately has uh, gone through numerous disasters over the last uh, few decades, including 30 the old uh, civil war, uh, tsunami in uh, 2004, uh, and the most recent was in 2019, there was an Easter Sunday bomb blast, multiple bomb blast in the city. So therefore we have had uh, time-tested effective triaging and hospital preparedness over the last few uh, decades, from which we have learned a lot as healthcare professionals, uh, as well as uh, we continue to improve on uh, hospital-based management. Uh, over the last decade, we uh, there was significant improvement in the uh, incident side to hospital patient transport system, so which is actually uh, a new thing to our setup because we didn't have a proper uh, free transport system, uh, but now it is on the main. Uh, so meanwhile, the policymakers have established a ministerial portfolio for disaster management, especially after the tsunami uh, event. Uh, incident in 2004. So uh, currently, um, most of the disaster management is uh, the, the drills, the preparedness, and all the, the information. Uh, everything was done, handled by them. Uh, so, in summary, as a de developing country, Sri Lanka has made a significant progress in the disaster management. And last but not least, I would like to thank uh, Asian Collaboration of Chroma. Uh, for giving uh, me the opportunity as well as the Sri Lanka College of Surgeons for uh, uh, giving uh, this opportunity to us. Thank you very much. Our next reactor would be uh, Dr. Laura May. Uh, she's a plastic and reconstructive and aesthetic surgeon. Uh, she serves as the chief of section plastic and reconstructive surgery and burns unit. Dr. Paulino J. Garcia Memorial Research and Medical Center. Kabanatuan City, Philippines, which will soon be the regional burns center for the central Luzon area. She's also the head department of surgery in 
Nueva Ecija Good Samaritan Health System Incorporated Philippines. Uh, Dr. Laura. Thank you um, and good evening to everyone. I am here to react to uh, Dr. Chong C. Jack's uh, lecture about the Bali Blast and uh, um, what the lessons uh, he got from that. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Chong for a very informative lecture first. Um, it's so uh, chock full of learning for, for us. Um, uh, I am coming from the point of view of a plastic surgeon, uh, a brain surgeon from uh, the Philippines, which is a country of uh, lesser resources relative to, the, to Singapore and other first world countries. Um, so we have a population of 109 million people, um, but we only have um, 150 plastic surgeons, not all are practicing burn surgery. And um, plastic surgeons are the ones handling the burn units here, but although general surgeons do um, treat mild to moderate uh, burns that don't need uh, uh, skin grafting. So we have currently five major burn centers, um, four are in Manila and one is in um, one is in the south. Um, my hospital is poised to be the sixth um, by next year. Um, and we are a country similar to Indonesia that we have um, several terrorist bombings in the last 10 years, mostly in the south, where we have one of our brain centers in Davao City. Um, however, the worst disaster that we faced in terms of burn casualties was not a terrorist attack. It was a, a major burn in a disco, in, in, in a dance club called the Ozone Disco. It was in 1996, where 350 party goers were trapped in a room with only one exit. So um, in this uh, disaster, 162 died on the spot and 95 were injured um, and brought to different hospitals. Um, I was a first year plastic surgery resident at that time. I was not yet rotating to the burn at the burn unit, but my immediate senior was the one who handled everything um, with his BS uh, general surgery burn rotator. Um, at that time, there was no uh, 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 set triage system for such a disaster, and all the patients were brought to the nearest hospital, um, the nearest hospitals, and the worst ones were brought to the nearest big hospital, which was the East Avenue Medical Center. Um, our hospital, the Philippine General Hospital, happened to be the first, uh, well, uh, first hospital to have a, an established burn center, the most equipped. So we were told that the 10 of the worst uh, cases would be brought to the Philippine General Hospital um, for management. So uh, fortunately, we were given two to three hours to prepare, and so we were able to transfer uh, the 17 of the existing burn patients to the different wards. And by the time the patients were brought to the hospital, um, the burn unit was ready to accept them. And um, like I said, it was Dr. Uh, my senior Dr. JJ Cruz, who is now a senior burn consultant at the burn unit at the burn center, uh, was the one who handled it. And he, she, he was also the media spokesperson. Um, I remember him talking to CNN. Um, so what we learned from that, uh, that uh, tragedy was that we needed a proper triage system to determine which patients would have the best survival. Um, and so the Department of Emer uh, Emergency Medical Services developed um, uh, that triage system with, uh, the part, uh, with the trauma section and the burn section. However, um, uh, we did not have what Dr. Uh, Chauncey described as uh, a disaster plan for the actual burn center. Um, and I think that is what we need to, in the light of what we learned, I learned today that we need to develop um, with the other burn units existing right now. So we actually meet regularly as a subcommittee of the uh, trauma uh, of the Committee of Trauma of the Philippine College of Surgeons. So it is going to be a one of our agenda to develop this so that we can be ready for 
to have a um, to have a disaster plan um, and a transfer system or a system of distribution of patients um, to unburdened centers that might be overwhelmed with cases. So another point that I got from the lecture is the skin bank. Um, it was actually an unsuccessful project or uh, endeavor of the Philippine General Hospital in the two, uh, early 2000s, I think. And um, they had the equipment, they had the material, but um, the main problem what we faced or they faced was um, attributed to a cultural barrier that uh, relatives um, wouldn't consent to harvesting skin from, um, from their, uh, rel uh, their patients because they felt it um, was more mutilating because it was visible. So they would allow um, organ donation because you know, you, they wouldn't be able to see it anyway. So I think we should have a better way of explaining and making it more acceptable. Um, to the relatives, and um, I am glad that there is a skin bank skin guideline that we may be able to uh, to um, to guide us. Um, and I think we should reconsider really starting a much needed skin bank um, in the Philippines. So, I guess the other key point that I learned is the, that Singapore General Hospital is doing early burn wound coverage, um, something which is not yet being explored by our burn centers. We do, mainly because we don't have the, the, the we don't have bio brain, we don't have cultured epithelial autographs or the skin bank. And so um, it might be difficult for us to uh, start um, early, very within the 48 hour period of doing um, very early um, um, excision and skin grafting. We do have the meat micrografting system already. Um, either uh, some of our hospitals have already bought and some are, it's for rent. Our hospital already bought one this month and it's going to be delivered so uh, soon. So um, that's a very, very big help for us for the larger birds. At the moment, we're still doing serial early excision, but not a, a few days after resuscitation. Um, so I hope that it is, I find it remarkable that uh, the average stay, the so hospital uh, stay is about six days. Um, we usually have two weeks to one month in our hospital. So I think um, there's a bright future for our burn centers. Uh, we are being given, uh, funding by the government to upgrade our units. The Philippine General Hospital is upgrading its unit into a more modernized burn center with two operating rooms. And we at uh, Dr. Paulino J. Garcia Memorial Research and Medical Center will open our own 10 uh, bed burn center this year. So um, I think we still have much to improve on and uh, to work on, and I thank uh, Dr. Chong for um, sharing his experience at the um, Singapore General Hospital, and it has been a very, uh, so many things to learn from. And I thank you uh, for allowing me to react to this, uh, to his lecture. And uh, Sang Tong, he's a trauma surgeon and former head of trauma and critical care service of the Soklan Green uh, Hospital, Prince of Songkla University. He's a graduate of the King Mahadol University, completed his general surgery training at the Prince of Songkla University. Uh, Dr. Borapat from Thailand, sir. Thank you, Alan. Thank you and good evening. Uh, my job is just to say something very brief about uh, what we heard from Dr. Abraham uh, Lifkin. In fact, what I would like to say, just would like to say thank you. It's such, it is such a great talk. We have no doubt on your experience, your wisdom. We truly appreciate that. But not only that, we also were inspired by your devotion to 
taking care of victims from terrorist activities. Living in country that not in peaceful condition that very often can be very tough. So may God bless you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking your time to be here at the conference. Moving on to Malaysia, uh, we have Dr. Rizal Imran LB. He's a senior consultant trauma and general surgeon and head of unit at the Trauma Surgery Hospital, uh, Hospital Sultana Amina in Johor Bahru, Malaysia. He's also the head of trauma surgery service and the Trauma and Burns Surgery Training Committee, Ministry of Health, Malaysia. He serves as a faculty instructor for the ATLS course in Singapore and Malaysia, as well as the definitive trauma care course in Singapore and the care of the critically ill surgical patients course in Malaysia. He is the vice president of the Malaysian Society for the Care of Trauma. Uh, Dr. Rizal. Um, uh, and thank you for having me here. That's a from the US. Um, there's very little that I uh, can comment and add on what Dina talked and she has made a very good tool on the system. Um, I have a few words on the uh, perspective of a uh, surgeon, a uh, trauma surgeon, that is. And as you know, the duty of a soldier is to do. And the duty of a uh, soldier in times of peace is actually to prepare for war and uh, training. And um, uh, when it comes to from the um, and prepare maturity, uh, other than doing self and practicing regular basis, and we know patients in elective general surgery. Uh, that's not trying to into the conundrum of, uh, of uh, me in other countries. I, I would come Malaysia to school and safe as my uh, is, um, school countries don't encounter as, uh, in, uh, trauma cases are uh, inflicted, uh, mass casualties, war uh, that other countries. Uh, well, is actually currency in skill. Uh, the best thing in, in, in mathematical skills is actually to do it. And we don't see the cases. We have uh, enough so-called training. When um, the incident does occur, that's not, not the time to train. Uh, you have to be trained before. Um, that's it is a bit of a paradox. Um, I think I'm not alone in, in uh, having this. Uh, and that system comes in, even though you have obstacles, larger, any of that um, would be the ultimate training for trauma um, in the South African um, scene. Uh, they are good. You know that South Africans are good and that's because of huge amount and huge load of uh, um, I think that in part that's what um, I have in common, which is the itself and if the is equal to in, in its own able to provide uh, data identifications in hospitals where the load are high, uh, so we might uh, be able to concentrate, uh, rotate to them. They get deployed, for instance, war zones and disaster zones, and, so and we would be that. Um, I think um, that would be uh, my solution to what has said overall. Uh, and it's my experience uh, to try to convince uh, surgeons in, in the. Thank you very much.